Greetings, class! Let's slice some more solids! We just did slicing solids number one. I will have that up and ready for you next week. After that is slicing solids number two. Now you'll notice if you look down here, this says multiple choice, have to redo whole assignment. This is the first one of these since we started this new era of learning online. So let me remind you right off the bat how to do that. So if you start off your assignment and you said the wrong answer, you said the, the parallelogram or something, and you get, oh no, it's a wrong answer. Well, first of all, notice it gives you the correct answer. And why is it a circle? Well, little review, if we slice it parallel to the base, what we learned in the last slicing solids lesson is you just look at the bottom, and the bottom is indeed a circle. So this would be a circle. So instead of having to redo the whole thing, you go up here to finish attempt, submit. Now you're still gonna have to redo the whole thing, but you're not gonna have to go through all the problems first before you restart it. Sure, it's gonna give you a bad grade. It's gonna look ugly. Ooh, a zero in 45 seconds worth of work. But then I can just hit start new preview and boom, I'm back. So it, it takes like 10 seconds to redo. All right, because these are all the same problems <laughs> and these are multiple choice, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time going over this. I also gave you a lot of descriptions on the last one. So again, if you slice parallel to the base, that means look at the shape on bottom. So that includes number one, that includes number two, you can see at what shape has a cube. That includes number three. Number four though is the first one, that's word is perpendicular. So perpendicular to the base, remind me what perpendicular means in general. If I have a line here, in this case a line segment, and I do something perpendicular, that means I am doing it, oop, came out a little crooked. I am doing it perfectly at a 90 degree angle to where this line here, this up and down line, is perpendicular to this line. So if I slice perpendicularly, instead of being parallel to the base where I take off the end of it, I'm gonna slice straight vertically through it. So instead of the end here, up here in this rectangular prism, I'm slicing straight vertically through it. So in that case, instead of looking at the shape on the bottom, you look at the shape on the side. So the shape on the side of the rectangular prism, well, fortunately for a rectangular prism, every single side, whether you're looking on top or bottom, is a rectangle. Woo, way to go. For six, and notice I'll go back to five, this one says perpendicular as well, and so you have to think, oh, it's perpendicular here and I slice up and down, what am I slicing through? Well, it's through a cylinder, obviously, but what shape ends up getting formed? And this one's a little tough to see. You have to think about, I mentioned this last time, if I have a 20 ounce water bottle and I peel off the label, what shape does that form? Won't say any more for that one. This one's a little tough to think because it's diagonal. So I'm gonna draw this here. So if I have, let's zoom in here. So if I have this edge, I have this edge. And I slice diagonally right through it. What I have just formed, maybe it'll be really easy to see if I color it in a little bit. What I have just formed here in this diagonal slice, can you see the two-dimensional shape? Is a rectangle. Just focusing on the purple part, not any of the white part, I can see that I have almost a perfect rectangle drawn here. And if I had the ability to pour water as I usually do in class, you could see that that's exactly what the water would look like on the surface of that water, it would form a rectangle. 
All right, I'll just say a few more things about seven and eight. So seven and eight is, seven and eight are, lovely grammar there. All right, so seven is an example of perpendicular again. So if I'm slicing up and down, what slice am I slicing? What shape up and down? I'm going straight through it the whole time. I'm not gonna give you any more help on that one. Just look at it. The final one is the diagonal of a cylinder. So let me see if I can approximate this one with my oval tool. I'm going to go pink on this one. Okay, let's start. This is tough. What if I, hmm, if I get an oval like that, can I twist it? I think I can. It's uh, pretty good. Okay, done. So if I slice diagonally here, and again, I'm going to color this in. This might not be a perfect, eh, it's not a perfect shade, but it'll be good enough. Just slicing diagonally. It's a little tough to see in two dimensions, but this makes it easier. You can see that this shape is a longer version of a circle, which I think I already said it a few seconds ago. And hopefully you can visualize now what that means. All right, now I'm gonna click it for you. I'll let you do it. Again, if it's multiple choice and you miss it, you have to restart the assignment, but you'll be learning it eventually. All right, that's it. This has been the perfect couple of weeks to begin this online distance learning era for math because we've had very few computations that you've had to do. You haven't had to use that Desmos calculator very much. My integrated three class has, but not my integrated two. So when we start doing surface area and volume, that'll get a little more complicated. Maybe this, this will take a little longer to do, but for right now, especially as so many of you get Wi-Fi set up for the first time and you're figuring out how to balance all your different classes and Google Classrooms and all this stuff, this will be the perfect way to get eased in from my math classes. And it feels great that it's just a coincidence that this is the curriculum that we're supposed to be covering right now. All right, much love to you all. As always, I hope this finds you safe, healthy, and well. Until next time, this has been Class Away From Class.